Thank you. Gorgeous. Thank you, Steve. Really, Thank really, you. really, really yeah. pretty. <clears throat> so that's, and that's off of your new project. That is, yeah. That's the, the first tune off of a, a nine-song album. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which officially came out when? That was on the 14th, so it's very fresh, very new. Good. Um, yeah, Good. absolutely. Beautiful. Now, you got a capo on the third fret there. Yeah. Uh, tell us about how you uh, composed something like that. Um, well, usually what kind of comes off as far as songwriting is inspired from other songs. So I, yeah. I listen to other artists and I hear what they're doing and how the melody is kind of happening. And then um, you go and you grab your instrument and then something else comes out. You know, it's something similar maybe, but something yeah. just inspired by that. Um, so where, what idea was the start um, of this song? I was listening to some uh, Sung Ha Jung, um, and I got some inspiration mm -hmm. from him. He's a, he's a Korean uh, fingerstyle uh, player, and he's, he's fantastic with the melodies, and mm -hmm. I think that's where some of the inspiration from this came. Um, and, uh, you know, and Drop D, and it, it sounded better capo third fret just because I feel like Drop D, when you're down here, is great for rhythm and it's great for strumming, but there's less, um, there's less difference in between notes. It can yeah. get a little bit muddier. Um, not that... You know, not that you can't do great stuff down there with that, but it just fit this song. Um, and it fit that the melody was way up top. Yeah. Um, it just kind of sparkles up there, whereas it would have been down there if I yeah. was without the capo. So that, that's the reason for Beautiful. that. Beautiful. Yeah. Tell us about your guitar that you're playing today. Um, what you yeah, this is a Maton uh, 808 TE model, so Tommy, Tommy Manuel's model. Um, and uh, it's just a great guitar. Uh, it has a has Sika spruce tops and uh, How long a maple you had back that? and sides. I've had this... Um, over a year, about a year and a half now. Yeah, so um, it's it's been great. I love the pickups in the maintenance. The pickups yeah. are just fantastic. Yeah. Um, so it's good for recording. You just plug it in. And then you're running the through an uh, a regular old AER. Yeah. Amp here. Normal AER. Um, this, that's the Compact 60. I'm pretty sure. Now, so what you're actually hearing uh, on the broadcast is just a really a direct line. Uh, an XLR mic line coming out of the back of that amp. Mm -hmm. So those AERs get a tremendously good sound. Uh, it's plenty loud for such a small little yeah. amp, yeah. and it's just pristine, and I know Joe Robinson uses them a lot, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and uh, other yeah. fingerstyle artists. They're not, they're not cheap, no, but, yeah, but uh, they are a great, great amp. Mm -hmm. And like you said, they're not, they're not, I mean, it's such a small amp, too, like you can carry it around. It gets plenty loud. Yeah. Um, and I know some people that just use the AER pocket tools, which is basically the preamp from that. Um, and you get the, the AER sound, but you don't have to carry around the speaker. You can just go straight into the PA, yeah. basically. Yeah. If you guys out there that are watching the broadcast, if you all have a question for um, Colin, please type it in all caps, and our producer, uh, our chat moderator, Neil, will get that to us, and then our uh, that will get that to our... Uh, people here and we'll try and answer as many as we can um lee candiotti is saying is that a dad gad tuning no it's a no it's just drop d drop d so yeah. talk us through the the, the um, strings so the, sh so the strings minus the fact I'm, I'm capo three obviously um the from the a string down is normal and then i've i've lowered the e string the low e string down a whole step so it's just normal drop d <laughs> makes for a nice a nice sort of thing a lot of resonance there a lot of resonance yeah and it just i feel like it also it fits like the capo position i feel like fits different guitars certain guitars just sound better in certain spots yeah. and i'm not sure why that is i guess it's the wood and whatnot yeah and this just seemed to fit um now where did you get that uh guitar this was at? that uh from artisan guitars, artisan down guitars in here in nashville yeah or franklin yeah franklin. Well, greater nashville great uh guitar store down in the factory area of mm -hmm. franklin Artisan Guitars, and we love them over there, and they've been really good to us. Mm -hmm. um, this here at, at Groons is uh, kind of our home base, and Groons has been doing fantastic. If you watched Monday Night Football uh, a few nights ago, yes, last night I guess it was, uh, you would have seen Groon Guitars on, I believe the Titans were playing, and uh, they had uh, QuickBooks came in with a film crew, and did a little bit of a spot for uh, uh, on George Groon and Groon Guitars, mm -hmm. so it's a amazing place here. Yeah. Buzz Roberts is saying string gauge, uh, low, medium, or high. Um, 
and about and the action setup as well. Um, these are what lights. What strings are you using? Uh, these are elixirs, uh, the nano web and the phosphor bronze. Um, and uh, I have tried uncoded strings, mm -hmm. and I love uncoded strings, but I just can't keep them, you know, <laughs> alive. They just they they die and they gunk up too fast yep. for my fingers, and it's just because I sweat too much. You know, yep. it's just it. I just have that problem. Um, if I could, I would use you know uncoded. But yeah. um, these get the job done, and they sound good. Yeah. They last a good while. Um, there is one other type of string that I liked, um, and it's uh, a nickel. And I think it was the Martin Retros. Oh, and those okay. are, those yeah, are yeah. good strings. Yeah. Um, and they're a little bit softer on your fingers, mm -hmm. and they didn't tend to, you know, seem to die uh, like just normal phosphor bronze. How often do you change your strings? Um, it depends on kind of what's going on, but uh, with elixirs, like... It's probably once a week, you know. Yeah. Um, but if there's things happening then I, that I need to sound, you know, it needs to sound pristine for it, then I'll change them, you know, good. every three days. Good, good, good. Charles Snyder is asking, um, my, his favorite question is, what is the best lesson that you have learned that would help us? Oh, man. Yeah, big, big uh, questions <laughs> here that is tonight. A, oh, man, what is the best lesson? that would help. What is some of the oh, most man. helpful information that um, you There's a lot, um, but I guess, I guess one would be keep listening to the people that you love. You know, yeah. so if you love Tom, Tommy Emanuel, keep listening to him. Mm -hmm. If you love Sung Ha Jung, you know, mm -hmm. keep listening to him. If you love Joe Bonamassa, listen to him, you know. Yeah. Um, listen to him before you play, listen to him after you play. Um, try and learn from those players and YouTube is fantastic because yeah. you can go on to those videos and you can slow down everything yeah. Um, and figure out what they're doing. It doesn't change the pitch of the audio or anything. Yeah. Um, so, um, I mean, it's amazing, you know, to, to think like you can learn anything that was almost basically ever played on a guitar. <laughs> you know what I mean? On YouTube, it's yeah. there, and yeah. you can find it. Um, so that's that's cool. I think that would be the, the some of the best. Uh, you and know. you're starting to get some airplay with Spotify now. Yeah, yeah, Spotify's been good so far. Ta talk to us about that relationship, because that's a new, yeah. new thing. Yeah, I just got on Spotify. I, I had my music distributed. It's also on Apple Music and um, iTunes and stuff like that. But um, that was about a year ago now. No, it would be less than a year ago now, um, six or seven months. Mm -hmm. um, and I got my music on Spotify, and it's been doing pretty good since, and it's gotten onto some nice playlists, which is good. And that's kind um, of the key for Spotify. That is a big key for Spotify, yeah. yeah. Um, there's, it's kind of a, a different world. Like, if you get on a good Spotify playlist, you'll be getting a bunch of streams, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, it could give some good exposure as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's, that's great. And I've got a, a cover songs album up there, mm -hmm. um, a couple singles. Um, I did a single with uh, a guy named Lance Allen, mm -hmm. uh, who's a great uh, finger style guitar player, um, who is also doing uh, well on Spotify. Uh, yeah. And... Um, and then, obviously, the brand new album, String Stories, is yeah. now up. So Good. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, man, so many questions coming up here. Um, Lee Candiotti is saying, what players have you studied with? Um, You've kind of done a lot of your progress, but kind of on your own. It's, it's a bit, yeah, yeah, it's been a bit of on my own, but, um, you know, through YouTube and, you know, <laughs> learning, learning from all those players, you know, I, I did uh, get to take a lesson with Jack Pearson, mm -hmm. um, and that was just, as inspiring as can be, you know, yeah. just, just to sit in a room with him for 45 minutes was yeah. awesome, you know. And there's so many, there's kind of a young group of players that are coming up. Um, Casper Esman, yeah. um, Christy Lene, uh, Ian mm -hmm. Ethan Case, um, Walter Rodriguez Jr., who is watching tonight, um, yeah. amazing jazz <laughs> fingerstyle player in his own right, was saying how he had... Uh, was enjoying He's looking great. forward to yeah. doing your stuff. Yeah, so we look forward to having Walter on the show. Walter, if you ever coming through Nashville, buddy, <laughs> let me know. We will have you on the show. Um, amazing. Barry Kane is saying, um, how do you maintain your picking nails and mm. breaking and stuff like that? So let's, let's see your <laughs> nails. What do you, what do you have yeah, going on there? They're just, they're real nails. Mm -hmm. um, and I do, I do break them. That's the problem and with real nails. Sh show them kind of still again, and yeah. we'll get a picture of them. Yeah. And how do you and, um, um, yeah. buff them and, and yeah. polish them? And um, man, the nails, the nails are tricky because like for my, for my nails, they, they tend to get dry and want to crack. Yeah. Uh, so I put hand lotion on them. Yeah. Um, I put some like 
in shower uh, humidification, you know, stuff. It's for dry skin. I just yeah. put it on there, wash it off, and then it, it seems to be good. And if I don't do that for a couple of days, I notice it. Yeah. My tone, th it was happening today. Like, mm -hmm. my, my tone was starting to get kind of papery. It'll yeah. sound like you're, you're picking with a really, really floppy yeah. sort of pick. Um, uh, and then as far as, like, keeping them trimmed and stuff, I just I clip them to where I want, and then I, uh, I use some, I think, 400-grit sandpaper. Mm -hmm. Um, and I have tried uh, different things where I try and get smoother and stuff, mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't it doesn't seem to work for my nails. Like I I get more of a I get too soft of a sound. Yeah. You know. Um, well, you got to find what works for you. Exactly. That's the there, and for my nails, it's just an in between. I think there needs to be a little bit of a rough, you know, surface. Yeah. It's not really rough. It's just rougher than you know steel wool or something like right. that. Right. We get it too. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, let's talk a little bit about um, harp harmonics. One of the things that you do so well and have learned um, uh, that is such a part of, fing of uh, a modern finger style mm. is harp harmonics. So um, if you're interested in this on our discussion board, which you need to be logged into, if you're, I know they're putting up um, the links for it. If you're not logged in, uh, you won't see the links. So you got to log into our, sh our discussion board in order to be able to see the links and stuff like that. So just take a second. Put in your, uh, you know, username, uh, password, and, a f and a, uh, an email address, and then you'll be logged in, and then you get all the downloads that we have. So there is a two-page little download that uh, Colin has put together uh, originally for, for our fall finger style retreat. And uh, you taught this, and there's a video that goes along with this yes. as well. So that's on, the, uh, on the, our discussion board in the live lesson for tonight, you know, December mm -hmm. 18th. Mm -hmm. yeah. So... Um, Il illustrate it a little bit so yeah. the folks know what's going okay. on and then uh, kind of tell us what's let's see so <laughs> Gorgeous. Um, <laughs> um, all right, talk us a little bit about through the basic parts of the technique. Yeah. There's, it looks like you're just kind of tapping along the way, but you're not actually tapping the string. You're just kind of hitting the harmonic part of it. Yeah. And then yeah. you're plucking it with your thumb under, underneath it. Um, so kind of talk, talk the, the gang through that. Mm -hmm. So um, harmonics, we, most of us know they happen at the 12th fret. If we just you know, lightly cover the 12th fret, not the wood, but the metal of the 12th fret. It'll cause the string to vibrate in a harmonic. Um, so basically what we have to do is figure out how to make that happen with one hand. And so the way to do that is we take our index finger. Maybe we can get a tight shot of this, David. We put our index finger on um, the 12th fret, for instance, and then our thumb has to be the one to pick the string like that. That's that's a tricky thing to just to get your finger to sit there straight and then your thumb. You don't want your thumb to be really really close to the um, the harmonic. It kind of kills it. Yeah, it's got to be. It back has away. to be pretty far. The farther the better. Um, so it's basically like doing this just with one hand. Um, some people do it with their ring finger, so they'll put their their pinky or their index finger down and then they hit it with the ring finger. Um, so what these false harmonics are and the harp harmonics and how you get that sound right there um, is you mix real notes with the harmonic notes. So what happens, uh, I'll do it really slowly. So we're hitting a harmonic with our um, index finger and thumb, and then our ring finger comes and hits another string. In this case, if we hit the E string, we would hit a G string harmonic. If we hit an A harmonic, then we hit the B string. D harmonic, and then we would hit the E string. So it's... Now if we were going back down, uh, we would hit the G string harmonic, and then open E, D string harmonic, B, 
A string harmonic, G, E string harmonic, D. So on the way up, you have two strings in between the harmonic note and the real note. On the way back down, you only have one string in between the harmonic note and the real note. And that takes, and it takes yeah. a little bit of s sitting on your bed trying to figure yeah. out, get your fingers to cooperate, because there's so many things, movements that are happening. You've got to get the harmonic, you've got to pluck it, then you've got to do the th third uh, finger to catch the, the real note. And yeah. so there's lots of physical things. So as you're trying to do this, don't feel bad that you don't get it in five minutes, because mm -mm. it's a complex mm -hmm. little technique. Now, you can get it, but you just need to sit there and piddle with it for a while. To, uh, yeah. to get it, and then you, then it, it'll slowly you'll start to find the sweet spot of where you need to pluck yeah. and have your first finger on to to make the harmonic uh, ring out as clearly as possible. Yeah, yeah, and it's a technique that you kind of have to keep up too, um, and and keep doing it. You know, um, play songs with it in it. You know. So once they've got the basic yeah. um, part of the, once they've got yeah. that part down. Um, where do the, where do you go from there? How do you start incorporating yeah. other notes in there? Yeah, um, uh, different uh, chords work better with mm -hmm. harmonics. So if you were to you were to take these and put them with harmonics, you know, for instance, we just did it on the open position. Um, so let's say we move that up to the third fret, and let's do let's just you know just barring the third fret, you could do the same thing. Okay, that would be a G minor chord. Um, if you have the um, uh, the little uh, worksheet there, you'll have you'll see some shapes that work well with harmonics. Um, that's one of them, where it's just a, a big bar chord, but it's a minor chord. It turns out to be a G minor 11th, and that's a nice sort of thing. If you put your pinky down or your ring finger on the uh, fifth fret of the E string, you have a G minor ninth, and it sounds like this. Okay. Um, and you can do chord progressions with this as well. So, um, for instance, like here's an E. Okay, so here's an E minor ninth. But you got to uh, tell them about where you're plucking yeah, those harmonics yeah. now too. That's important. So halfway, you, we always want to pluck the harmonic halfway. You know, the halfway point of the string. The halfway point of the string is right there if you're not fretting a note. But as soon as you fret a note, it moves up a fret. So. It goes from the open A. If we fret one, we have to move up one fret with our right hand as well. See that? So if we move up again, we have to move up another half step with our right hand. See that? So a good way to practice this would be form just like a C chord and try and trace the C chord. Right? And that's just harmonics. That's not incorporating any of the open notes. Um, you can try and... kind of play little little lines and whatnot, trying to match where your, your fingers are to get a feel, to get these two kind of attached to each other. Um, so when you, when you form chords like this, you have to map them out. Awesome, okay. And then you can incorporate the other finger. That sort of thing, Yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And then you start incorporating yeah. other notes that are hammering on or pulling off yeah. as you're doing these as well. Yeah. Like you've got you've got a couple of shapes written here for a six string, mm -hmm. um, shapes that go off of uh, some of these chords. Let's just kind of go through these. That yeah. first one, it's kind of a minor ninth sort of a, a yeah, shape. Yeah, and that's the one we that's were. That's the one you were just doing. Yep, the minor ninth. And then what about the second one there? Now that's an that's an interesting shape. This one right here. If you strum it, it just sounds like nonsense. But when you actually play it. can tell our root is actually up here on the G string. Mm -hmm. So that is that acts as a B flat major seventh if we're right here. Um, you have a seven in the bottom, mm -hmm. then it has a, a nine right there, and then a normal uh, B flat chord right there, mm -hmm. and then another seven on top. It's just a really weird voicing. Yeah. yeah. So g go through those notes uh, very slowly so we can yeah. figure out what you're doing there. So this is a an A. Well, mm -hmm. actually, um, I should just say the numbers because, well, B flat's a funny key. Let's put it in C. Okay, so this would be a C major 7th. It's got the 7 in the bass, which is a B. And then we're on the 5th fret with our index finger. Um, that's a D, and then we, which is also the 9 of that uh, key. And then we have a G, and then a C, and then an E, and then another B on top. So it's a B, or it's a C major 7th, but it's a weird voice. Sound it sounds, voicing, yeah. yeah, it sounds good with harmonics, though. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, a lot of times, 
uh, normal chords don't sound good with harmonics. Mm. Um, so it's just kind of putting, shuffling around the notes in different spots, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wonderful. Okay, we've got, we will uh, um, talk more about that in a minute. Let's, let's kind of uh, mm. give something away. I want to give, um, this is one of your new CDs, new project away. Um, and if you would be so gracious as to autograph sure. this for the masses before we go, <laughs> that would be great. Um, the winner of this is coming. The winner of this is Barry Kane. Barry Kane, um, you've just won Colin's new project. Uh, if you can, send me your information, Barry, at service at mightyoakmusic.com, and we can uh, send me your mailing address, what you won, your screen name, things like that, and we will send this out to you uh, next week. I haven't sent out the ones from the, our last lesson with Johnny Highland, which was, uh, or that was, Johnny Highland was probably about three weeks ago. Last week's lesson, or last time's lesson, uh, was me teaching some, some Christmas songs. And I've debated on whether to even put that one up because I played so terribly in it because of my hand. Mm -hmm. And uh, a couple of people have asked about uh, whether I could put that up. And I don't know, I might, I might do it. I just, I played so terrible because um, my hand is, is giving me such problems with that. So, but hopefully uh, we will uh, be coming out of that uh, soon with my, my tendinitis issues, but it's a real pain in the rump if you're a guitar player. Um, I can do everything, but I can't put my thumb on the back of the neck. <laughs> and that pressure point right there is really, uh, um, really painful. So um, hopefully if this all works and I spin out of this soon, then we'll have my hand specialist guy on the show and uh, we'll talk <laughs> about uh, the exercises that he's taught me to, um, to um, uh, uh, get my tendonitis uh, taken care of, all that swelling. So we're looking forward to uh, having him on. I'm not going to have him on yet unless he, we, I mean, it needs to, I need to get better. Once I get better, then we'll call him a genius and <laughs> stuff like that. So, um, all right. Very good. I um, wanted to let you all know a couple things. This is our last live lesson of the year. It's been an amazing year that we've been able to do with live lessons. So many great things have, uh, we've started this year and we've got, uh, more great things that are going to come soon in the first part of the year uh, of changing up live lessons and getting some, uh, getting some new things happening. So I'm excited about that. Also, if you're still looking for um, a Christmas gift for the, the signif significant guitar player in your life, um, we have our guitar gathering hats, which you can go to our um, website, guitargathering.com, go to the store, uh, part there and you can get to our hats. There's still a little bit of our um, um, mugs that we have and shirts as well. Anything you order, I think I got about eight mugs left. So if you're interested in a mug or a hat, um, get them before they all go away. Um, so that's that. Also, if you're looking for a, a great experience, as far as a, a gift, I tell you what, why don't you consider our Guitar Gathering Conference? You know, if you're tired of giving away um, um, Christmas neckties to that significant guitar player in your life, why don't you give them about four days in Nashville with some of the best guitarists on the planet and take a look at our Guitar Gathering um, 2019 conference. You can go to guitargathering2019.com and um, it will get you some of the information there. We're still locking in a lot of the artists, but I'm talking with some big ones. So it's... Um, it's a great time getting together. Colin, you've been with us for many of those conferences yeah, now. Yeah. Um, how long have you been coming? Probably about four or five years uh, now? I think it, I don't know. It's been four, yeah. maybe four, three yeah. or four. I yeah. think three or four, yeah. We've got that it's one. And then we mm -hmm. also have our fall finger style retreat, which mm -hmm. is already half mm -hmm. over half filled for next year. <laughs> so uh, that was a crazy great time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we had, uh, who'd we have this year? We had... Um, Joe Robinson, we had uh, mm -hmm. Trevor Gordon Hall, mm -hmm. amazing player. Wow, check amazing. out some of these yeah. guys on YouTube. Trevor Gordon Hall was amazing. And then, of course, Phil Kagey, you can't go wrong with mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And so there was lots of late night jams and, and uh, some pretty incredible magical moments. So if you're, if you're still looking for that Christmas gift, hey, lock in uh, one of our conferences. Uh, this is the lowest price those conferences will be. After the first of the year, things will start going up a little bit. So, um, there you go. Awesome. Um, 
And then the last couple of conferences, you've been t you've been teaching finger style. Yeah. Uh, and and done some of the workshops at our conference. So if mm -hmm. yeah, if any of you guys are interested in uh, actually learning from Colin, um, you can um, check out our conference. Sure. If they wanted to get onto yeah. your website, what is the web address for um, that? You can type in colinhillguitar.com, but put it up in the URL search bar because it's a brand new website and Google doesn't recognize it yet. Um, so if you put it down below, it might not show up yet because it, it's, you know, it's about a week old now. So, yeah. um, but if you put it up top, uh, you can get there and uh, it's got my uh, CD in there Good. and whatnot. Yeah. What are you going to play for us? Um, let's, another song from the CD. This one's called Seasons and it is also <laughs> Capo 3 Drop D. <laughs> there you go. So... Why not?
beautiful. You know, it's it's so exciting to you to see a young player start to develop their own voice and start to find their own voice. Um, and that's, you know, you kind of start where you're looking at other players and you're trying to imitate and there's almost kind of a mimicking going on as you're, as you're starting. And then there comes a point where you start to try and find your own voice. And that's what's, re that's what's really exciting. Well, thank you. Because you're not Tommy Emmanuel and only Tommy can be Tommy yeah. and only Joe Robinson can be Joe Robinson. Mm -hmm. So we don't need a bunch of clones for that. We need um, everybody bringing their own, their own sure. voice to yeah. it. Yeah. And so that's, I'm thrilled about the new project. Let's give one more of these away. Um, because you're starting to find your own voice. I love it. Um, all right, we're going to give away another one of these. The winner of this is Randy Parker. Randy Parker, you've just won one of Colin's CDs. And um, send me your information, Randy, at uh, service at mightyoakmusic.com, and we can get you, um, get you fixed up with that. Um, talk to us a little bit about, I have some folks asking about your, your practice regimen what mm -hmm. you do during your practice times talk us yeah. talk us through what you've been doing lately yeah um well lately as in the past couple of weeks it's been i've been so busy with the album and yeah. trying to get all of the the computer work and that sort of stuff done um so that you know a lot of that's been getting in the way but um if i can i usually try and set aside you know a couple hours at least where i don't do anything but play guitar mm -hmm. i just you know no distractions that sort of thing um and it's usually earlier in the day. That yeah. way, you know, everything else is that happens later is, is, you know, side to this. I don't want it to be I do everything during the day and then I don't get to guitar playing. You know, I'd rather yeah. not get to something else, you know, unless I have to do yeah. something else. But um, so, yeah, I usually try and set a time. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's, it's only, you know, I practice what I, what I want to work on, you know, what I'm, what I'm struggling with, um, what I want to get better at, you know. Um, harmonics you know I say okay I, I'm, I want to get better at harmonics or I want to do something so I look at my phone and be like okay I'm going to do that for 20 minutes you mm -hmm. know um, and uh, so I do that and uh, and then you know sometimes it's picking just mm -hmm. just trying to get my my right hand technique up and that sort of thing and um, you're using a thumb pick right there. yeah yeah uh, right regular now. old Dunlop yeah uh, Dun Dunlop medium uh, is what works for me. Yeah. Um, and not all of them work. I have to go through and find, because each package seems to be a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, some of them don't hold my thumb as much. I've only got two right now that hold my thumb well. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's um, always a trick. Yeah. With those. Yeah. So. Um, now, yeah. Do, you, do you work on specific uh, technique exercises? Or yeah. are you working on songs or what? Um, a lot of it is songs. But mm -hmm. if there is something, like I said, with the picking, if there's something I want to get better at, and that's one thing that I do want to get better at, I'll put a timer on and say, okay, I want to do that for 30 minutes or 20 mm -hmm. minutes or whatever I have time for. Um, and just do that with a click, always with a metronome. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I, I just practice with a click, you know, songs that I know are going to, uh, uh, you know, that don't flow in time signature, you know, or yeah. anything like that. I'll put a click on and just make sure that I'm staying with that. Mm -hmm. um, also, recording yourself, that's huge. Um, because you really don't know what you sound like until you record yourself. So just put your phone down with your um, voice memo app, yeah. hit record, play that awesome lick, mm -hmm. and then listen back and be like, oh, man, <laughs> <laughs> I really need to work on that, you know. Um, yeah. And it, that also helps with songwriting, too. If you, if you hear an idea and you think, that's pretty good, mm -hmm. and then you record it and you're like, no, I don't know about that. And then, yeah. and then you're like, but wait a second, now that you're listening to it third person, you're like, oh, it should go over this direction, you mm -hmm. know? And then you try that chord, and then you put it down, and you're like, that's better, yeah. you know? These things evolve, you know? Songs yeah. kind of e evolve. It's not like it just, oh, my goodness, it just pops it to you, and you have this entire song on your guitar. Uh, you kind of start with a lick, an idea. You kind of just, for me, I know I just noodle around with it for a while and just kind of mm -hmm. live with it and work with it, and I'll try it over this and try it over that, and maybe I'll try it in major or try it in minor and see it then I can kind of build some structure around that mm -hmm. idea to create something um, um, musical out of it. And the trick is for us guitar players is we kind of find a lick that we like, and then we uh, do it a bunch of times, and we forget when we're actually crafting a song that it, it needs to evolve and go other places as yeah. well. Yeah. So um, you have your main part that you're playing, but then you have to force yourself to play something else Yeah. and uh, do that. I remember Phil Kagey talking... Um, one time about just every time he plays something, so frustrating to try and learn his stuff because he never plays it the same twice. 
Uh, he's always moving things around and shifting things around. And I remember him saying, if you're just bored with your playing, just start twisting your knobs up here <laughs> and end up in some crazy tuning and then build something else yeah. off of that. So, yeah. amazing. Yeah. And usually, like, when you have a good idea, if you have a good idea, a song can be made from that, you yeah. know? It only takes one good idea, and yeah. then you put that in the chorus of the song, you know, or the verse of the song, whatever it fits. Yeah. Usually, if you have a good idea, and you, you like it, and it's on your phone, something will come from it eventually, yeah. you know? Yeah. What are some players that folks should be listening to if they're interested in finger style? Um, this sort of contemporary yeah. finger style like that? Um, Tommy Emanuel, for sure. I mean, he's just great. Yep. Listen to his original stuff. Try and find the songs that he doesn't play. You know, ne not necessarily the ones that you always hear, you know, mm -hmm. the, the Beatles medley and the classical gas, and the, yeah. which are fantastic. But his original stuff is awesome as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, find some of those and see his, his melodies and his, his harmony is really good. Um, uh, Joe Robinson's fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, man, there's so many people. Uh, Phil Kagi, of course. Trevor Gordon Hall's great. Um, Christy Linnae is great. Um, and there's, there's a lot of different types of finger style, it seems mm -hmm. like. Um, there's, there's some more percussive finger style. Mm -hmm. um, there's more traditional finger style. There's thumb picking, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so kind there's of the Merle Travis. Yeah, the Merle, end exactly. Of finger style, which that's with Tom Bresch and, and uh, mm -hmm. Tommy, of course, does it all. But um, mm -hmm. uh, that is a different kind of genre within finger style yeah, as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, which Chet Atkins, obviously, he did yeah. so well. Um, and he's got a lot of, uh, of great songs and things to learn from, you know, on YouTube for sure. You can see a lot of him. Yeah. Um, and, um, man, so many other players. So many other players. Yeah. 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 Uh, CJ Ray is saying, where to get Steve's hat? Well, uh, it's not even my hat. I stole it from Dave White, who, <laughs> who's uh, visiting here. Uh, you can go on to our Guitar Gathering store and uh, guitargathering.com. Go to the store or the resources tab there, and that'll get you to go to apparel. You know, we have our shirts and hats and stuff like that. Um, Wade Staley is asking, um, what was your learning curve like? Uh, what was your aha moment that you decided, I really want to play guitar? Um, one of those moments was uh, Jack Pearson. I saw a video. Oh, actually, I owe this to you, Steve, to be honest, because I, I remember... Um, well, I, g I got your course a long time ago, and mm -hmm. I started to learn. Um, I started to learn the, you know, the the notes on the neck and some sort of stuff, and getting yeah. my fingers because my fingers couldn't even play a note at that yeah. point. You know, that's yeah. where I was starting. Yeah. Um, and uh, it kind of, I kind of didn't do it for a couple of years, you know. And mm -hmm. then when I was 16, I think, I was looking up how to get. I, I was playing electric, and I was looking up how to get dotted eight th delay sounds, mm -hmm. you know, and I came across your video. I was like, oh, I, I know yeah. this guy because I have yeah. his course, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then I clicked the other videos, and I saw Jack Pearson playing with you. Yeah. And then I, I heard him soloing. Um, you guys were just playing a blues together, you know. Mm -hmm. And that was just awesome, awesome. So um, that year I just learned as much, as many licks as I could from him, you know, and tried to figure out what he was thinking, you know, mm -hmm. um, trying to figure out how he played from chords and mm -hmm. stuff. And then I figured out a lot of people play from chords, you know, mm -hmm. and not necessarily scales, um, really both. And Now, uh, do you come yeah. from a musical family? Are there other yeah, people in your well, family that play? My mom plays violin, mm -hmm. and she taught me violin growing up, um, and I still play that as well. Mm -hmm. So that was so I guess there was some foundation in yeah. uh, hearing music and stuff. Good, good, good. Yeah. But now you live here in uh, Nashville. Y'all used to be in California. And now yeah. you live in uh, Clarksville, a little bit north of town. Yeah, a little bit north. Yeah. 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 And it's so it's been, good to have you great. in Tennessee. <laughs> yes, Emil Ehrenbro. That's, that's a huge influence. He is a great player. We had mm -hmm. a... Uh, um, what are some podcasts or YouTube channels that you've learned from? Hmm. Um, Man, it's mostly been just from looking up players. But yeah. you, can, you can learn, fanta I mean, a lot of great stuff. Um, I'm always, like for electric guitar and stuff, I play electric for church a lot. And mm -hmm. so I'm trying to figure out how to get sounds and things that, I, that I'm just not used to on yeah, an acoustic. Yeah, it's a different, you know? type, different it's, type of playing. It's a different world. Yeah. I mean, the amount of gear that, <laughs> that you need to get certain sounds. So I'm always on, on YouTube trying to find, and there's some certain people that I go to for that as well. Yeah. But, um, man, there's a lot of good channels, you know, yeah. um, for people learning. You've got your own stuff. YouTube channel as well. Yeah. So um, if you're interested in, in Collins, you put out 
quite a few videos. Um, every few weeks you're putting out something new. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. check out Colin's uh, YouTube channel as well. Yeah. If you haven't, if you haven't um, subscribed to our YouTube channel, uh, Guitar Gathering, please kind of go down onto your screen and click that subscribe button there. And that, uh, as soon as we um, put something up, you will get a notification of that. And then we also have our email list as well, where we're sending out new uh, new things all the time. So there you go. Um, talk about the guitar you won at Chet Atkins. Did you win a yeah. guitar at that the was Chet at Atkins the convention? No, that was um, the the Merle Travis. It was at the Merle Travis Center. It was the thumb picking competition. So yeah, it was the. The 2018 uh, competition. I, I got win, to. In Winfield? I got to win. No, that's in Muhlenberg County. That's okay, up in Kentucky okay, yeah, at yeah. the Merle. Uh, yeah, I think it's called the Merle Travis Center. Um, and uh, it's a nice Gretsch guitar. It's a country gentleman. Yeah, and beautiful. It's a, it's what a color? Gray, it's yellow. Yep. It's, which is, I think, it's the the maple. You mm -hmm. know, just natural but stained, so yeah. it comes out that color. Yeah. It's nice. I do. It's a fun guitar to play. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. <clears throat> All right. Um, trying to gonna go through the uh, some of the questions here. We had a. Um, if you're interested in a little bit more of the harp harmonic stuff, Colin has put together a great video on that that you can get to on our um, guitar gathering uh, community website, and uh, it will it will get you to his his information. Or you can look on um, I think our guitar gathering Facebook page as well. We've put that link up there. Um, so there you go. CJ Ray is keep, keeps telling me about guitar gathering socks. We do have socks in our in our store as well. You can thank my lovely wife for the socks. I thought they'll never sell, and <laughs> I'm amazed at I've, all you crazy nuts buying guitar socks. So we have, <laughs> we have uh, about run out of a lot of our guitar socks. We've still got a few of them going there, so... You can uh, get them. If you order anything tonight, I'll, I'll promise I'll get it out tomorrow. So you'll try and get, be able to get it for, for um, uh, the holidays uh, later on this week. So before Colin plays his last song, let's give away um, one more thing. I wanted to give away a Groons, um, a really cool Groons water bottle. So the winner of this is... It's coming... We have our top people working on that hmm. right now. Mark Young. Mark Young, you've just won a, a Groon's water bottle. So we will send that, send that information, your mailing address, stuff like that, to service at mightyoakmusic.com, and we will get that off to you. And Colin's left a couple CDs. We'll give those away in some, in some other broadcasts sure. as well. Keep talking mm -hmm. about it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. What yeah. are you going to play for us to close this out? Um, I kind of want to play some Christmas music. Just Great. Cause it's, yeah. Why not? Okay.
Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Steve. Thank you so much for I being part of our guitar family. Thanks for being here. Keep up the great work. Make sure to be playing a little bit during the uh, holidays. We will see you guys after the first of the year. See y'all.